Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review Mumford and Sons Babble. These guys are a folk outfit hailing from the UK, and this is their sophomore album. And their debut LP brought quite a bit of popularity to the band, and they really hit a mainstream peak few bands do who are of the folk persuasion. Admittedly, in 2009, their debut album kind of breezed by me. I wasn't really reviewing with the proficiency that I am today. I wasn't really exploring a lot of things in the folk genre, especially when it comes to the more mainstream acts who were, who were signed to more major labels. Plus a lot of the people that I knew personally when, when bringing this band up in conversation would just talk about how much they hated what they were doing. I never really knew why, but when I sat down to kind of listen to this LP and the band's previous album, I did kind of get a grip as to why, for sure. And I have to say it's just mostly because of the band's aesthetic. I mean, it's very cleanly recorded, aristocratic folk music. There's nothing overtly rootsy or really even kind of, you know, common people about it, like is, is pretty much the tradition with folk music. And I certainly don't expect the band to go all the way back and do something completely traditional or, or anything like that. I mean, folk music has certainly evolved over the decades. It's certainly become a pop animal to an extent. Paul Simon is, is a culprit in this equation too, and he appears on a bonus track of this LP. And there are even more modern artists who have brought the genre of folk even further than, than Bob Dylan, Paul Simon, and, and their contemporaries like Grizzly Bear, who have brought things in, in quite the progressive and psychedelic direction, or even Fleet Foxes, whose folk compositions tend to be pretty complex and, and have some really heavenly, big, gargantuous, and just ambitious, soaring vocal harmonies. Honestly, after listening to this, the only thing I can really say separates Mumford & Sons from their other folk contemporaries, at least when it comes to indie folk, is their absolute lack of risks. There's just really nothing adventurous about how Mumford & Sons approach this genre. It's almost adult contemporary. Track after track they just have this devotion to pretty straightforward and accessible songwriting with some semi-big instrumental presentations with horns, pianos, guitars, banjo. However, it's not necessarily a bad thing considering that for the most part, the band delivers some decent tunes. I would say that simplicity weakness kind of works into a strength for these guys at times because that simplicity leads to catchiness. Now there are a lot of very kind of cliched romantic lyrics on here about traveling and God and the devil and hope, alcohol, death, love curses, and, and hearts come in several flavors as well, including broken, cold, and what's the other one? <laughs> Heavy. That's the one. And the vocals of Marcus Mumford are delivering these lyrics with a considerable amount of sincerity. It's funny, the stories he weaves can be pretty vague sometimes, but he is so goddamn passionate about them. Now the melodies and the chord progressions on this LP, nothing incredibly groundbreaking for folk music like I said, but still pretty sweet and pleasant on the ears. The track I Will Wait has some pretty thematic chords that opens the song up, and the instrumentation playing them just has a really kind of grand feel to it. I mean, it's hard for me just not to respond to that emotionally. It just sounds so nice. And the track Broken Crown has this kind of dark, moody, minor toned melody on the chorus that, that stuck in my head instantly. And the ferocity at which these guys deliver the chorus on this track makes it even more memorable. The track Ghost That We Knew is, is a kind of heartbroken piano ballad in some spots in that song, and the track Lover of the Light instrumentally feels like just running over a grassy hill and there's a big tree there and a sunrise is coming up. There's just a lot of kind of pretty musical moments on this LP. Even though a lot of the instrumentation on this album tends to be kind of refined, a lot of the viscera comes from the guitar strumming, still the instrumental rushes do tend to be kind of exhilarating, even if they do tend to be a little samey-samey here and there. Mumford and Sons do kind of bring a variety of emotions and, and tempos and just feels on this LP. I mean, there are tracks on here that really kind of create an atmosphere that is very rousing, while others are kind of forlorn, sad, 
depressing, lovesick, sometimes even inspiring. It's an album that's definitely sweet on the ears, but it does sometimes get boring for me when I'm listening to it from front to back, though I can pick a track, really any track out of this and say, hey, you know, that's pretty decent. I mean, if Mumford & Sons came out with another album and just kind of brought a little bit more experimentation in terms of how they write or structure their songs, maybe some production or recording with a bit more grit and some lyrics that had a bit more, I don't know, uniqueness to them. I could see myself being really impressed with whatever they do after this. But, you know, if you're looking for an indie folk album, a folk pop album that is, is kind of comfortable, something kind of like a rocking chair, old pair of shoes, warm fire, then this most definitely will resonate with you in a big way. I thought this LP was pretty likable despite the fact that, I mean, I don't really think Mumford & Sons changed their formula all that much this time around. Hopefully there's a bit more adventure on the next LP. I'm kind of feeling a strong six, strong six on this album. What did you think of it? If you've given it a listen, did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And what should I review next? Anthony Fantano. Mumford and Sons, forever.